Yo, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here, back yet again with a black and white two live decks. Uh, last episode, we caught ourselves a ball toy in the ruins back here. This episode, we're gonna head back out of the ruins. I mean, there, I think there was stuff in the ruins that we haven't caught yet, but the idea that I wanted to do for this episode is to go catch myself Eradicate in the area that we could catch that, because we were just in the area and it was, it was right there. So, you know, might as well. And yeah, let's go make our way over to that. Should finally be out of the ruins. And just, where were we? I don't even think this was the right place. Oh, this is where we could catch uh, Rog and Rolla, which is why we were kind of around here. I recognize that as the specific area from the image where Rog and Rolla, right where we're at right now, is supposed to be about 30% encounter chance or something. There's deep in uh what should we call it deep in the relic passage not from dust clouds either i just figured i'd check the dust cloud for like a gem or whatever uh we obviously already have drill burn exadrill i think we even used them for a few gems or something i might not have i think i deliberately tried not to but i forgot if i ended up actually not using it but yeah let's head back we can make our way over to eradicate territory and a lot of uh, a lot of the less common encounters, though. I guess that's just bound to happen with the amount of encounters we've been getting. But yeah. Uh, let's head up this way. Is this where we came in from? I thought we came in somewhere else. No, we definitely did not come in from that way. I, I actually just forgot entirely how we got to where we got. But that means we're probably in a room where we can catch something. Okay, so we're not- we're actually not in the rug and roller room, we're in the Bulldor room, which means Radicate's available here. Yeah, we just have to- to roll well enough to get ourselves Eradicate. That's just it. That's- that's all we gotta do. Very simple stuff. <laughs> but so far we've rolled only Bulldors. I think Radicate's like a, what, 10% encounter? We've done like 5 encounters since walking into Relic Passage here. In this middle area specifically, like every section of this cave actually has different encounters. Which is really interesting. That's pretty abnormal to be honest. Grr. Interesting. Why did my... I just realized the text reverted to white. I have zero idea why that just happened. I very clearly set it to black and it's still set to black. That was really, really weird how that just happened. Like, in the overlay in the bottom right, it just changed the color of the text. That is abnormal. Yeah. Another boulder. I mean, we'll hit Eradicate soon enough. They're not that uncommon. Like I said, it's a 10% chance or something in this room. Even if it's a 5% chance, that's not awful odds for just normally encountered stuff. It's pretty bad odds for, like, depending on the way half of this stuff is encountered. Uh, but we're not working with half the stuff. We're working with just a normal, you know, walk around and counter things type of deal. But yeah. Uh, let me know in the comments though, what is the rarest Pokemon you've caught? Uh, like, that is the question of the day, obviously. I don't know how many times people are really going to respond to them. Uh, so far, it's not that often. I think every, like... 30 episodes, I've had one response to the question of the day, so let me know if you've watched this far in the video, what is the rarest thing you've caught? Uh, I think for me personally, it was, it, was, it was a shiny mimic here, but I guess it really depends on how you define the odds, because if we're talking raw odds, the best thing, sorry, the rarest thing I caught was actually in a, a soul link I did with the Boo King on this channel, on my second channel here, where in uh in the span of two episodes i got two different you know random odd shinies in black and white one uh, i got a suwaddle in one episode you know it was like super excited I was like dude i got a shiny you know we we did whatever we were gonna do that episode but the shiny kind of derailed whatever progress we were making or whatever we were training up uh and then in the second episode i went like a little bit further like up into uh What's, I always forget the name of the New York-based city. I know at this one it starts with a C. 
But like I said, every time I think of the uh, Pokemon City with the name of C, I always think of like Cerulean. Uh, or is Cantaleaf even a Pokemon City? I think that Cantaleaf is from uh, Gen 4, like Diamond Pearl Platinum, but uh, I don't actually remember where I'm getting that from. But I know it's in this game. I mean, it's the, it's the New York-based city. I I always forget the name of. But either way, you went there, and then I got a shiny Padove, and and like the back-to-back -back nature. It now to be fair, it wasn't back-to-back -back encounters, but it was like within ten encounters of each other, and they were complete full odd shinies. Like I didn't have the shiny charm. I wasn't playing like a modded version of the game with like you know five hundred uh, one in five hundred odds. Because some of the, the better ROM hacks of this game, like the ones made by Trayano, uh, they have altered odds where the shiny chance is 1 in like 512 or something, or 1 in 1000, instead of 1 in 8192, which is what we're currently playing with in Black and White 2 before we get the shiny charm, which cuts it directly in half and makes it like a modern game. So the modern Pokemon games by default have a 1 in 4000, and then you get the shiny charm and then it makes it a uh, 1 in 2,000. Uh, but in, in just these raw games, it's a 1 in 8,000 chance. But with that being said, uh, Pokerus is 1 in 16,000. And we got that naturally while playing this. Which is incredibly lucky, incredibly rare. Uh, and I was actually really excited when I saw that. I think that's actually cooler than getting a shiny. Because I just wasn't planning for it. You know, I hadn't done anything in preparation for it. And I actually caught it like on time because with Poke Rust it like expires if you don't store it in your PC box properly uh, and I managed to notice that I had it and then store it properly and, and actually get Poke Rust kind of like permanently stored in my box which that was that was really fucking cool and that was way back when we were at the uh, the Litwick Tower or whatever with the bell on top of it uh, anyway we got ourselves Raticate while I was talking about all that uh I think we already called something Rachel, but I do want to use RA, because, you know, eradicate RA. Um, is Randy... I feel like Randy's like a male name. You know? So... I mean, Rally's a weird name, but it's, I think it goes either way. That's, there we go, we got Rally the Radicate. That's a decent name, I think, actually. Um, with that being said, it would normally end off the episode here, but I want to go into this room because I have the feeling I might not record the next episode for a little while. And I want to be in the room where Rog and Roller uh, can be. But I'll just, I'll stop it here and hopefully I remember, you know, what I was doing next time I record another episode. Uh, but yeah, like I said, let me know what was your rarest kind of Pokemon you've caught or rarest experience, I guess, in Pokemon would have been a better way to exp uh, express that. Uh in the comments and I'll, I'll probably take a look at them and you know, I'll reply if I find it interesting or if you leave room for a reply. I do generally read every comment, I just don't reply to all of them because sometimes there's not really much to say besides like liking the comment or whatever. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.